Nowadays, you can find a chicken sandwich anywhere. KFC, Wendy's, McDonald's, Burger King, and the gas station on the corner have all been slinging their versions of this American favorite since the chicken sandwich wars started in 2019. With such a saturation of chicken sandwiches, how does someone choose where to get one of these delicacies? Well, maybe you've heard the slogan, we didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. Born and breaded in Georgia, crafted by S. Truett Cathy way back in the 1960s, the classic chicken sandwich from Chick-fil-A just hits different than the copycats and imitators that have come onto the scene since. Maybe it's in the seasoning, or maybe it's the southern charm, but whatever the secret ingredient is, it's delicious. Buckle up, because on this episode of Every Last Crumb, we're taking a ride through the drive through of history to tell you exactly how Chick-fil-A built their chicken empire. Our story starts with The Dwarf Grill, the first restaurant opened by S. Truett Cathy back in 1946 in Hapeville, Georgia, a suburb just south of Atlanta. So named for its diminutive size, the diner was only 384 square feet, and it got its start catering to workers from the nearby Ford Motor Assembly plant. Because of the cramped conditions, the workers were sometimes referred to as dwarfs. As you can see, we have what English experts like to call a play on words. Or or something like that. I wasn't paying attention in school. I was too distracted by daydreams of chicken sandwiches. The Dwarf Grill served up your classic American fare of the time, and yes, those two cows who plead with Americans in television ads and on billboards across the country to eat more chicken would be horrified to know that S. Truett Cathy's restaurant once served burgers and steak sandwiches. In his defense, that was before he discovered the chicken sandwich, and in the early 1960s, a revolution in fast food was underway. By cooking chicken in a pressure fryer, Kathy discovered a method to cook a chicken breast in the same amount of time it took to cook a burger. When pairing the fried chicken breast with pickles on a buttered bun, Chick-fil-A's signature sandwich was hatched, while the Dwarf Grill changed its name to the Dwarf House and remains in operation at its original location today, Kathy soon started expanding to spread the good news of such a special chicken sandwich. I mean, he didn't have to go far, 384 square feet is smaller than some celebrities' closets. In 1967, Kathy opened the first Chick-fil-A in the Greenbrier Mall of Atlanta. By emphasizing the chicken sandwich experience, Chick-fil-A was easily able to distinguish itself from competitors. The predictable success of the first location led Kathy to expand into other shopping malls across the country through the 1970s and 1980s. This shopping mall strategy was effective because it ensured the brand would be exposed to hungry customers looking for a bite to eat after strolling through so many stores. During his expansionary period, Kathy decided to pursue a licensing model as opposed to a franchising model. This business decision allowed Kathy and those close to him to more effectively control the day-to-day -day operations of Chick-fil-A locations, ensuring consistency in food quality and maintenance of the company's signature customer service. This era in Chick-fil-A history also saw innovations in the menu. Chick-fil-A introduced items like nuggets and a grilled chicken sandwich in order to cater to a broader customer base. The brand was a hit with fast food eaters everywhere it went, and this success compelled the company to think even bigger, or think even bigger, as the cows would spell it. The mall scene, like the Dwarf House, was getting a bit cramped, and Chick-fil-A needed to stretch its wings a bit. In 1986, the company opened their first standalone location in Atlanta, Georgia. The standalone location model offered several obvious advantages over the mall model, namely that customers didn't have to walk into a mall to eat a chicken sandwich. As the standalone Chick-fil-A started expanding, the country was exposed to the almost unbelievable efficiency of a Chick-fil-A drive through at any other fast food establishment, your stomach sinks at the sight of 25-plus cars sitting at a near standstill in the drive through But at Chick-fil-A, there's no sweat. How exactly Chick-fil-A manages to push so many orders out the door so quickly, especially with increased volume of modern-day to-go and delivery orders, is a mystery to most. And this efficiency is certainly a key component to the company's success. Another advantage of the standalone location is that the kitchens are bigger, allowing Chick-fil-A to offer more menu items. Today, this chicken empire has 2,600 restaurants operating in 47 states, Canada and Puerto Rico, and 
side is the king of chicken sandwiches, though recent competitors have been coming for their crown. We'll get to that later. So what's the secret that makes Chick-fil-A's chicken so good? There are a few factors that make it so delicious. First of all, Chick-fil-A uses quality meat from chickens who are raised cage-free, steroid-free, and without added hormones. The meat isn't separated or ground up like it is at other fast food restaurants. Though the company has never openly confirmed using a pickle juice brine to marinate their chicken before breading it, it is quite likely that this is part of the process. The seasoning and breading are also critical to the taste. After dipping the chicken into a milk and egg wash, Chick-fil-A employees coat the chicken in a seasoned flour mixture and firmly knead the flour into the chicken, ensuring an even coat of breading that doesn't flake out during frying. The chicken is then fried in peanut oil. Yes, in true Georgia fashion, the chicken is cooked in 100% refined peanut oil, making Chick-fil-A the largest purchaser of peanut oil in the United States. S. Truett Cathy chose peanut oil because of its extreme neutrality, ensuring that the chicken will taste like chicken and not the oil it's fried in. Chicken tasting like chicken? Genius! Chick-fil-A also follows a 20-minute rule, meaning they won't serve chicken to customers after it's been out of the fryer for more than 20 minutes. Finally, everyone knows a good bun can make or break a sandwich. Chick-fil-A butters their buns and then lightly toasts them, creating a bread that perfectly pairs with their chicken and pickles. As any good Southerner knows, any cook worth her salt can fry up a decent piece of chicken, but what about the rest of the meal? It's all about sides and the sauce, baby. Synonymous with Chick-fil-A are its waffle fries. Crispy on the outside and tender on the inside, the distinctive lattice cut of skin on potatoes offers a unique fry option to fast food junkies. Go ahead and skip the ketchup, though. You're gonna wanna ask for a few packets of the Chick-fil-A sauce, made from some combination of mayo, honey, mustard, barbecue sauce, and a hint of lemon juice. This divine sauce is a little bit sweet, a little bit tangy, a little bit savory, and a lot of bit good. If you're someone who thinks the sauce is overrated, not to worry, Chick-fil-A offers a plethora of sauce options. Polynesian sauce is sweet and tangy if you're feeling a little sweet tooth. The honey mustard is amazing. The sweet and sour sauce gives a bit of a zing. The buffalo and sriracha sauces are perfect for spicy lovers. The garlic and herb ranch is creamy and savory. And of course, any good chicken joint has to serve a good barbecue sauce. Other delicious side items offered are the mac and cheese. And when it starts getting chilly, customers can warm up with a bowl of chicken tortilla soup. In the summer, if you're feeling healthy, skip the fries and get a fresh blend of strawberries, apples, blueberries, and orange oranges in a fruit cup. Chick-fil-A is also known for having some of the best fast food salads out there. And whether you're opting for the fried chicken cob or just a side salad with your sandwich, you can ensure you're getting fresh quality greens. Who could forget breakfast? Boasting one of the best breakfast menus in fast food, popular items include chicken biscuits, chicken minis, and the uniquely amazing hash brown medallions. Great food, excellent customer service, and efficient food service are trademarks of Chick-fil-A, and on their own, they contribute mightily to the chain's success. But to compete with the heavyweight brands of fast food in the 21st century, you need a solid advertising strategy. And in 1995, Chick-fil-A came up with the perfect mascots, featuring two cows holding misspelled signs that implored Americans to eat more chicken. Chick-fil-A brilliantly distinguished themselves from other chains whose focus was on beef. Instead of making chicken a secondary menu option by making it the main feature of their restaurant, Chick-fil-A captured a significant share of the chicken market, and they came on the scene at the right time. Since Chick-fil-A opened their first standalone locations, American chicken consumption has skyrocketed, and since they started imploring people to eat more chicken in the mid-1990s, the public has responded by consistently consuming more chicken year over year. While this change in diet can't be completely attributed to Chick-fil-A, though some Southerners would say otherwise. It's safe to say when cows talk, people listen. 
Recently, Chick-fil-A's ad strategy has shifted from lovable cows to lovable people. By highlighting feel-good stories in local communities across the country, Chick-fil-A is able to highlight its exceptional customer service and how their employees are willing to go above and beyond for their customers. Seriously, it's weird how nice everyone is at a Chick-fil-A. It's so strange that there are literal conspiracies as to how these employees love a fast food job so much, cue X-Files music, but assuming the board at Chick-fil-A aren't dark overlords instituting some sort of chicken-based brainwashing strategy, what these feel-good stories highlight is the human connection in the service industry. Chick-fil-A does a great job of iterating that there are people back there in the kitchen cooking your food and that these people are nice and are trying hard to give you a good experience. This face-to-face -face effort and kindness are an important part of Chick-fil-A's brand and have contributed to the brand's frenetic popularity. While very few could deny the kindness of most Chick-fil-A employees, the social and political views of the founder and the executives have been criticized. S. Truett Cathy was a conservative Christian and his faith deeply influenced the business. In support of this faith, Chick-fil-A made donations to anti-LGBTQ organizations that supported conversion therapy and opposed same-sex marriage. While LGBTQ people and their allies organized protests against the company, conservative politicians went in the other direction by organizing days of celebration for the company. Chick-fil-A has since ceased their contributions to said organizations, but their political history remains controversial to many. As to the impact of the controversy on their sales, there appears to be none, and because of the days of celebration, it may have even boosted them. The summer of 2019 was a wild time in the world of chicken sandwiches, and Chick-fil-A found themselves smack dead in the middle of the most heated fast food war since Ronald McDonald was holed up inside a bunker defending his empire from the Burger King. It all began when Popeyes launched their legendary chicken sandwich on August 12th. Few people actually noticed the rollout of this new promotion, as there was much hooping and hollering about the impossible Whopper from Burger King that launched circa the same time. But Chick-fil-A changed that when they tweeted a tout of their chicken sandwich as the original. Popeyes responded with a tweet of Southern sass, and from this simple social media exchange, mayhem ensued. Popeyes won the first battle of the exchange, seeing a 38% jump in sales in the immediate aftermath, with stores having to contend with massive lines and chicken sandwich shortages that sparked angry encounters among customers. Chick-fil-A, as the heavyweight, retained a loyal customer base, but soon every fast food joint imaginable was jumping into the fray. Because Americans have been eating more chicken and less beef, businesses have responded, and now you can find new or upgraded chicken sandwiches on the menus of KFC, Church's, Wendy's, Zaxby's, Jack in the Box, Carl's Jr., Sonic, Burger King, and yes, McDonald's too. This influx of competition initially hit Chick-fil-A pretty hard, but since the pandemic, they appear to be re-establishing themselves as the king of fast food chicken. While they may have lost the first battle, they appear to be winning the war. And for chicken lovers everywhere, the original isn't bad at all. What do you think? Does Chick-fil-A have the best chicken sandwich, or has one of their rivals surpassed them? Here's a question. Chick-fil-A or Taco Bell? Watch this video to learn about the iconic Crunchwrap Supreme.